As you know, season 1 of Yu Gi Oh! Go Rush has finished with 51 episodes, and I'm making this video to talk about the little secrets that most people might have missed in the last 4 episodes, so let's talk about it. First of all, I want to talk about the final duel and the cards used in that duel. I really like the fact that they used traditional cards in the final duel for Go Rush and Sevens. They really did put a lot of traditional cards in the show. And what I mean by traditional cards is like Dark Hole, Graceful Charity, Proud of Greed, and a lot more cards that were originally banned but brought back to the show. We haven't seen those cards since Yu-Gi-Oh! The Duel Monsters series and also GX. So it's pretty cool to see those cards come back to the show. Really brings back a lot of nostalgia. But we're also seeing a lot of equip spells being used in the series, which can be good or bad depending on how you look at it. It can be good in the sense that we're getting more specific cards, equip spells to specific monsters, which keeps the limits on the usage of the card and doesn't make them overpowered. However, it can be bad since that equip spells could be overpowered and can limit the amount of strategies being used in the overall picture. For example, in the last episode, we could see that Zuijo equipped two spell cards to his monster and then Udius equipped three spell cards to his Oblivion and destroyed Zuijo's monster. In the end, the monster with the more equip spells won the battle. There needs to be a balance of strategy with other cards and equip spells to keep the game more interesting. Next, I want to go into the series a little to talk about the characters and the cards that they used in that duel. So we had Rovian, Manabu, and the Lug fight along Yuga against the Earth Dammer. But what I really liked about this duel is the fact that the cards that they used were from the original show Sevens. First, Yuga summons his Seven Roads Magician and also Luke's Dragius, fusing them together to bring out the Seven Dragius Magical Dragon Knight, just like how he did in the final episode of Sevens. You could really see the bond of Luke and Luge to Yuga, which is very similar because when they talk to each other, they are able to relate very, very easily, and it's so awesome to see. And we also see that Yuga uses Share Summon, so every time when he draws a card and it's a monster, then he's able to special summon it to the field. But before we get into the monsters, we need to remember that Yuga is using the same deck that he used in the final duel with Otis. So he has all those same monsters in his deck. However, what Konami really did was very important, which was have the character save the same chant from 7th in Go Rush. I want to see more monsters from the future being used in the duel. I did mention this in my last video, and some people actually doubted the possibility of being able to put old cards into the show. But it turns out that they were able to do it in their own specific way and Konami did find a way to do it so it worked out in the end and really does give that nostalgic feeling to the show. Also there was one more card I really wanted to mention in this video which was High and Road which really looks very similar to High and Low used in the final episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds when Yusei used that card against Jack to win the whole duel. So really nostalgic and really reminded me of that card just wanted to mention that. Other than just those cards that I just mentioned before from Sevens, we also get a whole bunch of new fusion monsters being summoned to Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush. Join Tech Burst Dragon, Eternal Galacta Oblivion, and the first time we actually see a monster with three fusion materials used in the show. This can change the way we see fusion monsters in the future of Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush, so we'll see how that really develops and evolves in the future of Season 2. In the last episode of Season 1, we get two prophecies by the creator. I first want to say the prophecy and then talk about what that prophecy really means. On a night of a large and hardly recognizable celestial body of earth, a warrior shall carve open an unknown path with rush duels and become the light for the universe. So let's just break that whole quote down. First of all, if this quote sounds familiar, it's because it was the same quote or similar quote used in Sevens when Yuga first created rush duels and the final episode when Yuga travels back into time. However, this prophecy is similar, not identical. If we look at the quote from Sevens, when the moon is full enough to be hardly recognizable, a duelist will carve open a new path and guide the world as king of duels. Now to protect everyone's duel, he sacrifices rush duels as he goes alone. The form of his departing figure is undoubtedly the king of duels. That was the final quote used in Sevens, and now we're going to compare the two. But now the new prophecy is referring to Udius, a warrior that shall carve open an unknown path. Mentioning a warrior, which is what Udius is, he was on the battlefield, and becoming the light for the universe. Now if we look at his deck, we could see that he uses a whole bunch of universe cards. It has light cards, and it's a galaxy base, so he's going to be part of the universe. Udius will create a path with 
Rush duels. Every time when Yuga duels together with Udius, you can see that Yuga is always saying that there's something ahead of Udius's road and he can't see it until he finishes or continues his path with Rush duels. That's just one quote. There is another quote in that whole show and this is the other one. A galaxy full of twinkling stars, yet how joyless this universe is. Imagine creating a game with no one to play. So let's create a model based on the millions of galaxies abound. One filled with people who will move, fight, and play of their own wills. Yes, and I shall name it, well, we don't know the rest. We just assume it's Valgarians or Karutumata. The creator never does a say, but we assume that it's the Valgarians. Since this was confirmation by Zuijo, this quote would explain slightly why Udius always says 8.88 million of his countrymen because the quote says millions of galaxies abound. So the galaxies are millions of them, so they're saying millions of people. We don't know how the creator was able to create an artificial species, but he did do it because he wanted to make the universe apparently interesting even though it's infinite. There's still a lot of mystery between the creator, Zuijo, and the Vulgarians, so I'm going to try and break it down to explain what really happened and try to see how this would impact the future. The creator says the purpose of the Valgarians is to fight and to keep fighting. And even if they do die, they will eventually revive and go back to fighting. And this is just to entertain himself because he said that the universe was very empty. So he's trying to have some interest. I'm going to name some examples of when Zuijo died in the show. That isn't the how many total times he died, but Zuijo died when he was on the battlefield with Udius. Then he died on the Lugs battlecraft with the whole freezing arc and the final time he died was when Zuijo and Udius dueled on the tower and he apparently gone missing that was the third time when he died on the show so those are the three times he actually died on the show I also found some weird information which is that Zuijo really didn't want to fight in the war but he was forced to because the creator was controlling him throughout the whole show now I don't know if this means that he's able to control every Valgarian or is it only just Zuijo because we never see how Yudi is being controlled by him. It was only Zuijo. But while Zuijo was being controlled, he was forced to write on the stone tablet Karutumata, which was passed down to generations. But we don't really know what that specifically means. I'm guessing it either means pawn or revival, because that's the only two words that would actually make sense. It wasn't mentioned directly in the show, so we are just guessing. This is just an assumption. But we do know it was passed down from generation to generations of Valgarians and it has an important meaning to them people comment below what you guys think of this video so far and your theories for the future of Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush but let's just continue with this video for Zuijo to stop this cycle of revival Zuijo needs Rush duels and Earth Dammer to make him and his people real life forms only Earth has Earth Dammers which means there are multiple Earth Dammers on Earth and we may be able to see multiple Earth Dammers in the future but right now, the only Earth Dammer we currently have is the one from Yuhi. That's why they are both connected together when they feel pain. We may see other Earth Dammer's life forms in the future of Gold Rush. We also see the Earth Dammer skills, but at this point, I would call it Earth Dammer the Damamu. This is because Damamu has evolved to the point which has life form and emotion and isn't connected to Yuhi like in its premature phase. I would say that Damamu's skills are on the same level as Yuga's because anytime Damamu gets involved in a duel, the duelist he helps out with always wins. We also get a slight look into Damamu's skill levels and I think this will lead to other people abusing and using the Earth Dammer on Earth. Now I want to get into the whole storyline and how everything evolved to the final episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush. The most important item in the story is a stone tablet and that's because most of the events that happen is after characters have discovered the saying on the tablet. But let's first go to the location of the stone tablet which is Planet Go Rush U. This was mentioned twice by Zuijo and Udius. When Zuijo would revive he said he would end up on Planet Go Rush U. That planet is also called the Fountain of Souls which is an interesting name that they really gave and which I think has a lot more hidden meaning to that planet. So we'll see what happens in the future. If you watched my last video, I had a lot of questions on how Suijo found out about Rush duels before even being created. It was written on the stone tablet and that's why he went to planet Earth meeting Yuga. What I find really interesting is the fact that Suijo ended up dying on the battlefield and this happened at the same time as Yuga's final battle with Otis. They met up together right after two events happened at the same time. 
But here's my prediction and my thoughts on the future of Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush and the season two that's coming up. Here are the things that Konami should continue and the things that Konami should change with the show. I think that Earth Dynamo will continue to evolve and have a major role in the future in helping Udius become a warrior and create a path with Rush duels. That character is probably going to be really, really important, especially since Danwu really loves Rush duels and likes to duel and have fun with it. But before Danwu could become a main character, he has to first go through a despair period. And what I mean by this is going to make sure that Rush duels aren't always fun for some people and make it a life or death situation. And there's a time to be having fun and the time to get serious in a duel. Also with the stone tablet, I do think that Otis is being involved, but isn't just him, but a whole group being involved in the evolution of Rush duels. The creator has shown his power of being able to create species, but we really don't know how limited his power is. Did he only create one species or did he create a hundred species? We really don't know. What I really liked about Go Rush is the fact that they were able to put Yuga in the show more and more often and being able to see Yuga duel with cards from sevens. And I really hope to see more cards from sevens being used in the show. Like I mentioned in my last video, I did say that I wanted to see more cards from sevens being used in that show to make him a staple. Like I mentioned in my last video, I do want to see more planets being used in the show. For example, we only seen some planets in the show. For example, Patnir, Mine Planet, and recently Valgear Planet. So that's only probably three planets that we actually saw. And I actually do like the design of Valgear design because it has an outer shell of blue that's really, really cool. But the universe is infinite and I think that adding more planets will create more life forms which will make the rush duels much more interesting in the future just like how they had it in the show where they added buster dragon deck and they were able to duel against it make the whole show much more cooler for that one episode i want to see more cards being used like that on different planets and to have different styles of dueling but let's just move on to the things i didn't like about the last episodes so what i really didn't like about the show is the fact that they were using big giant dual disc with extra animations which we did not need and it was the same amount of action added as a stationary duel between two people. I understand why they did that because they needed people or characters from the old show to be added to the series so they could add the old nostalgic feeling. But I did find it really annoying that they had this big giant duelist and I know they wanted to do a whole show for the future to see which ideology would be one over the other one for the whole planet. But in the end, it was just extra stuff added that we really didn't need. Time would have been better invested in other sections of the show. Like I always mention in my videos, I want to see more cards being used from traditional cards that were originally banned to the show, but also more planets for character development and also expansion of the universe so we could have a bigger idea of how big the universe really is for the kids or whoever's watching. But this is just my opinion. What do you guys think? Comment below, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want to support the channel, you can also go to my PSA card shop. I do have some awesome PSA cards on there. If you want to buy those. I do have Destiny Fusion, all these different kinds of cards up there that were graded and 100% PSA legit cards. So if you guys want to support the channel, click those links in the description and I'll see you guys for next video. Peace y'all.